Hi guys, this is Tensor from the Tensor Programming Blog. Welcome to the Elm Tutorial Part 3. Today we will be creating a simple to-do app that will look something like this. And when we hit submit, it creates an item with a button that allows us to delete it. We can add as many as we want. Each button will allow us to delete single items. We will have a remove all button. Let's look at the actual HTML of this. So as you can see, we have a div that surrounds everything. And inside that div, we have an input. Then we have two buttons, one for submit and one for remove all. Then inside there, we have a div that contains our unordered list. As we add elements, our unordered lists adds list items. So now I've opened our Elm project. When starting a new Elm project, you should always run Elm package install. This will install the base packages that you need and create a package.json for Elm. As you can see, here's the package.json. It's got our core dependencies. It's got a version number. We can change the summary. We can change the repository. And we can add other things into it. It also creates a folder called Elm stuff which houses our packages and the Elm language that we use. Because we are working with HTML, the first thing that we need to do is import the HTML library. And then we need to import HTML.app because we want to tie our application together. We also need to import HTML.events because we're going to have two buttons with on-click events. And we need to import html.attributes because we're going to be working with the attributes of our html. As you can see I've divided our program into a model update and view again. That is because our to-do will only need a model update and view. First we're going to create a mock-up view for this program. To do that we need to create a view function. So view equals div And inside the div second list, we will have a input. The input will contain a type. Now this function type with a quote allows us to designate the type of the actual HTML element. In this case, we will designate it with text. After that, we will have a button element, which will contain text of submit in the second list and another button which will contain text of remove all. Finally we will have a div at the bottom which will house our unordered list. For now we will not create our unordered list and our list items because we will be creating those in a separate component. If we want to take a look at what this will look like we can set the main function equal to the view. If we run Elm Reactor, we can see what our view will look like. So here's our view. As you can see, it's a text box with two buttons surrounded by a div, and it's got a div in the bottom. These buttons do nothing. The text box does nothing yet because we have no core logic in our program. So let's rectify that. So first, when creating a project in Elm, you want to define what the model will look like. So we will use a type alias. Our model type will contain a string called to do and a list of strings called to do's. We can quickly create our model function and the type for that model function by simply calling it model, creating a type of model, model equal to a record that contains to do with an empty string and to do's with an empty list. So that's all we're going to need for our model in this application. So for the next part of the application, we need to define at least one or two messages in our update. These messages are the messages that are going to be sent to our update when we input stuff into the input box and when we click on one of the two buttons. Type message equals update to do. This will take a string. Add to do. This will take nothing. Remove all. 
which will also take nothing. We're also going to use pattern matching because our update function will take in a message which comes from the view and the model which comes from the model and render our new model. The update function takes in message model equals case message of update to do will take in a string of text and it will change our record by changing the to do element equal to at text. Add to do will again change our model. In this case it will change our list element which is to do's and it will set that equal to the to do string which is model dot to do which will be conned onto the list. Now cons allows us to insert the string into the front of the list and this is exactly the behavior that we want in this case. So when you input a new string into the input box and you hit submit that new string will be inserted into the front of the list which will allow it to create an unordered list item at the top of the unordered list itself. Finally our remove all will simply change our model by setting to do's to an empty list. Now we need to change our view function. Our view function is taking in our model. For an import element we want to add an on input function called update to do. We also want to add a value function that calls model dot to do. The reason we do this, this value model dot to do, is so that the input knows that this is the string that we are inputting. For our first button we will have an on click event which will take in add to do. For our second button we will have an on click event that will take in remove all. If we were to run this program as is we would actually have problems because it's not actually showing us any feedback that it's taking in the to do list. Inside our second div we will call text to string model dot to do's and this will show us dynamically as we type in the string inside the input box. We also need to change our main function so main will equal app dot beginner program. Now we have a fully working program. If we reload our Elm reactor we can now see as we type in elements the div automatically changes though when we hit submit nothing happens and that's because we haven't created our unordered list items. Also the reason why we're getting these quotes is because we called toString. If we remove the toString function we won't have the quotes anymore. So now we want to make two more components in our view. First component will be called todo item which will take in a string and output HTML and a message. To do item takes in to do and it outputs a empty tuple for now as a placeholder. Our other item will be called to do list which will take in a list of strings output HTML and a message. To do list will take in to do's and we will use what's called a let in binding. Now let in binding allows us to bind local variables in a block. It lets us keep the scope local to this specific function. Let's take a look at how that works. We're going to bind a variable called child to list dot map to do item to do. And what this is doing is it's going to map our item up here to our to do's list. Next we want to add the in element so we add the in block to the end and now we define what our unordered list will actually look like. Now because child is a list itself we do not actually have to put brackets around it. So now let's mess with the to do item part. So our to do item is fairly simple. It's just a list item that contains text to do which is the text version of to do. Button which will have an on click event which we have yet to create the message for. Button will have text of x to make it look like you're deleting something. So now let's look at our app. If we hit submit, nothing happens because we haven't added these components to our view here. So let's add these components to our view. Call to do list down here, it doesn't actually work. So what we need to do is call to do list and pass model dot to do's inside of it. Let's reload this. If we hit submit, 
we now create elements, but we can't delete them yet because we haven't added functionality to this button. We can remove them all, however. Now we're getting closer. So now we want to be able to selectively delete one element at a time. So let's create that message function. The message function will be called remove item and it will take in a string called text. Remove item will change our model to do's item by setting it equal to a list filter using an anonymous function. So what this list filter is doing is it's taking the text string and it's passing it here. And then this variable gets passed through each item of to do's and it tries to find if that item is equal to text. And all the items that are not equal to text stay inside of the list itself. The item that does equal text gets removed. Let's add this to our type syntax. Make sure that you pass string through it because it is taking a string in. We call on click remove item. And then we have to pass to do in here. We need to put parentheses around this so that it will work. Now our application should work as advertised. Now we can delete individual items from our application. There is one caveat, however, with doing things this way. If you have multiple items that have the same value, it will remove them all because of the way that the filter function works. We could change that, but for now it's not something that's critical. So now we have a fully functioning to-do application, but there's no styling in this to-do application. We can change that by using a function called stylesheet. So what we've done here is we've created a function called stylesheet, which uses a local binding. It binds tag to the link element, and then it creates a list. And inside the list, it has a set of strings, which create a tag attribute. And then we use the node function to create a tag attribute, which then imports all of this information into our HTML. Now, if you notice, children is an empty list. That's simply because all HTML elements in Elm take two lists. So if we import style sheet into our view here, we can import it into our div, and now we can start adding classes to our items. Our div is now class Jumbotron. You can mess around with these classes based around typical bootstrap fashion. As you can see, the class function is a function itself, but you can pass multiple elements inside of the string that's being passed to the class function. Just make sure that you are adding the class element to the first list inside of your element. We save everything and we reload it. We now have full styling on all of our elements. You can play around with this and make it look better if you want. And you can even import your own style sheet using the same method. Just replace the HTTPS with your own local path to a style sheet. There's also one more thing that I want to do with this application and that is make it so that when we input an item into the text box it gets removed. The easiest way to do this is to add an on mouse remove item to our input box. On mouse leave we will call it clear input. We need to add clear input to our messages here. Clear input takes no argument. Clear input is very simple. All it does is change our model record item of to do equal to an empty string. Now if we reload our application, if we type something in the box, hit submit. I screwed up. I made it mouse leave. I meant to make it a mouse enter event. So now if we reload our app and we hit submit, when we move our mouse up to add a new item, it clears the input box. I hope you guys enjoyed this Elm tutorial. We will of course be making more in the coming days. I hope this small app gave you insight into things like the let end binding, as well as how to dynamically change models and write anonymous functions. Anyway, thank you very much. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe and like. If you dislike this video, 
feel free to dislike and comment and tell me why. And if you thought we missed something, feel free to comment and ask a question. Anyway, thank you very much, and until next time.